already logged into the Oracle Cloud, let's do so now to start Lab 500. Let's enter the cloud account name, followed by your username and password. Once in the OCI console, let's navigate to the API Gateway by selecting Developer Services API Gateway. Let's make sure we're in the App Dev Compartment. Let's click Create Gateway. Here you will enter a name. It will be a public gateway. We'll also leverage the OKE VCN that was created earlier in the lab. And let's select the appropriate subnet and click Create. While the API gateway is creating, let's move over to the VCN. And let's add an ingress rule. Let's click on the security list. Here we're going to open up port 443. Once the ingress rule is created, let's move back over to the API gateway. And create a deployment. Here we'll provide it a name. Get product. Along with the path prefix. We'll give it the path of products. The method will be a git. The type will be HTTP. And here's where we'll enter in our product REST URL that we created earlier in the workshop. Once the deployment is created, let's copy the endpoint and test it out. Here you will see a list of products returned from our endpoint. Now that our API gateway is created, now we're going to create a new Apex workspace. Let's navigate over to the Autonomous Transaction Processing section, select our product catalog, ATP instance, click on the Service Console button, the Deployment option, and click Oracle Apex. We'll do a workspace login. The workspace will be internal. The ID will be admin and the password will be the password of the admin user that was created during the ATP instance. Once logged into Apex, we'll create a workspace. It'll be tied to the username alpha. Once created, let's log out as the user admin and log back in the Apex workspace as a user alpha. We'll be prompted to set the Apex account password. Here you will enter in the appropriate email address and then the desired password. Now logged in to the alpha workspace, we're going to create our first Apex application. We'll be creating this from a CSV file. But before that, we're going to show you how to install some simple sample apps or charts that are available in Apex. In this, we're going to install the sample charts application, and then we're going to run it. Here we will log in as the user alpha with the password you said earlier. This just shows you some sample reports that are available in charts in Apex out of the box. Now let's return back to the application builder. Let's click create. We're going to create our application from a CSV file. So let's drag our CSV file into the drop area. We're going to load our data into the table forecast. Once the data is loaded, let's click Create Application. Let's select a couple features as well, an About Page, Configuration Options, and Theme Style Selection. Once the page is created, let's take note of the application ID. In this case, it's 101. Next, we'll run the application. 
we'll need to log in as the user alpha with the password you set earlier. At this point, let's navigate around the application. Let's click on Dashboard, Forecast Search, and Forecast Report. Now we're going to go back to Dashboard and we're going to edit page two. We're going to make some minor changes to the layout. We're going to delete the forecast section. We're going to move the year month underneath region. We'll also change the bar type or the chart type to bar. We're also going to change the series SQL for region. For year and month, we're going to change the chart to bar. We're going to enter in a custom title. We'll also enable the legend. And also modify the SQL query. After these changes, let's hit the run button again to see how our application changes look. Now we're going to need to move over, or we're going to configure our web server an application to create a new page which will access the data using the API gateway we created earlier. Let's create a new web source. This is the API gateway URL that we created earlier. Here you will see sample data displayed. Let's go ahead and create the web server. Now we're going to create a new page which leverages this data service. There'll be an interactive report. Give it a page name. It'll be based off of a web source. We'll select our product web source and save the page. Now let's make some minor changes to the SQL. Now you will see that data displayed from both the REST endpoint and from the relational forecast data that we imported earlier from the CSV file. Now we're going to create a pivot view on this data. Let's go ahead next and add a region filter. In this case, we're selecting US, but feel free to select your own region. Now that we're done creating our new application, we're going to move back over to the OCI console we're going to navigate to Developer, and here we'll, we plan to build a build job which will clone the application that we now have created into a new one. So let's click on our project. Let's click Builds. Let's create a job. Let's select the existing template. Let's use the existing Git of product catalog service. Now it's time to add some steps to the build job. Let's add a SQL CL step. Here we'll need to add the username, password, and wallet file. We'll also include some inline SQL, which will back up the alpha workspace to a SQL file. Let's add a second 
SQL CL step. Here we'll enter the same username, password, and wallet file. This time the in inline SQL will look slightly different. It will take the SQL file from the first step and restore it into a new application with a new application ID in Apex. Let's save our build and run it. Once completed, let's navigate back over to Apex and see our newly created application. And that concludes Lab 500. Have a good day.